name is Darren and Happy New Year. In the last quarter of 2022, I bought myself a few tools and this is the selection of the best ones amongst those. So without further ado, let's have a look at what I bought. Now first up is this T600 rule from Drill Pro. I bought this from banggood.com. Again, links will be in the description below for most of the things here. And some of you are probably thinking it's a direct ripoff of woodpeckers. Yeah, so be it. <laughs> it does the job. It's uh, nice and square. You can adjust the square slightly with these screws. In fact, it comes in two pieces when you first buy it. Screw it together, set the square, and once it's done, it stays nice and square. The measurements are all very accurate. I've double checked them against other instruments, uh, tape measures and other solid rules. A lot of MDF and plywood sheets sold in Australia are 600 mil wide. So this is ideal because it's 600 mil. There are holes at one millimeter increments down the length of the center of the rule. And as you've no doubt seen before with others, that allows us to draw a measurement or a line parallel to an edge. So we can, for example, and there we are. And there's our line. That might be our cut line, for example. Now, usually it would work when we talk about scrapers. Most people will think of a card scraper, but contoured scrapers for doing things like uh, molding are also really handy. And having something like this, this one's years and years old, this is an old pear tree made in, I think, Sheffield, England. Um, as, as you can see, this has many different profiles on the end of it, but it doesn't have everything under the sun and it's, it's getting a bit old. Great, I've got a lot of use out of it. But to increase the number of profiles I can actually access, this is an all-way CS6 interchangeable head scraper. It comes with this little storage container here with your six blades, and each of the six blades can be turned around either way and attached to the head. So I've got a whole heap of different profiles in there. And inside the handle, where are we? Kept in there with a magnet, which I like, is a little file which is round on one side and flat on the other for sharpening these. So that's a nice little touch, I think. A good little tool. The only con really is this little holder is, is rubbish. <laughs> when you close it, it's got these two little clips that keep it shut and they grip so tightly that when you try to open it again, the blades just all fall out. But other than that, it's a great little tool. Now fitting or changing the heads, and this is quite simple. Got a little screw there, well not so little. Undo the screw, uh, pick a head. There's a portion at the back here to stop the thing from twisting, so we put that in the back and the screw through the front. And that's it, we're good to go and we, we can start scraping. So in this case, I've got a little bit of glue there. Oh, that's a lovely noise, as you can see. It's doing a great job of removing the glue. Actually, it's doing a really good job. There you go. And when you want to do a bit of moulding, you can change it over to another one. You might find a sharper one like this is really good for things like uh, detail moulding. Say, for example, you've routed a nice Roman oggy in the end of something, in the edge of a piece of timber, and then as you're varnishing it, the varnish is building up in the little details, you can get back over it with one of these sorts of things and just scrape out the excess. So you maintain nice sharp edges. Moving along, we've got the UG1 Universal Gauge from Bridge City. I love this thing. Now there's a few reviews for this already out there on YouTube, so there's probably no need for me to go into a great deal of depth, but uh, it's great in as much as we've got a, a depth gauge. Spin that around slide it in, we've got a height gauge. We can use this section of the UG1 for converting imperial to metric. So we could just slide this to a specific measurement, for example, one inch. And there we go, it's a little bit over 25, being of course 25.4. And it also allows us to make a measurement. So if we wanted to mark something at 25 mil, there we go. We can now mark a line parallel to an edge using that. And there we are, there's our line. Or we could use a scribe in there, so that's very handy. 
Now there are magnets underneath so it'll sit up on a table saw which is handy because you can use one end as a square for setting your saw blade or the other end if you like and of course then we've got the tilt function for adjusting our saw blade and you can see on here it's already marked out the angles you need to cut for various different objects so a four-sided object obviously 45 degrees at each mitre and so on we've also got your standard dovetails here your eight is, your eight is to one and six is to one dovetail settings they make two versions uh, one where all of this is on the opposite side if your saw blade happens to tilt the other way this is my previous marking knife it's a beautiful little knife as you can see it's flat on one side and obviously sharpened on the other so you can rest it up against the timber and make a nice score and this is a really nice tool really well made very happy with it but it has one downside and that is the handle so if you've got a larger piece of timber something thicker than this or whatever you're using as your reference um, you have to then angle the blade in so as to keep the handle away from the edge and then you get less accuracy and you're far more likely to ride up your timber on the sharp blade and cut the edge of your reference rather than mark the piece you're meant to be marking. So here in my apron now I have a new marking knife held in with a magnet mind you. Now if I'm pronouncing the right this correctly it's an Ikeuchi marking knife and as you can see again flat on the back but this time no handle. With the Ikeuchi marking knife I can Put the whole thing flat against the timber and there we are and i know that that's perfect every time it's really well made high quality japanese steel and uh, yeah hats off to the company that made this they've done a good job most of you are probably already familiar with jonathan katz moses he's got a youtube channel here a very good woodworking channel and he also makes his own tools this is a Jonathan Katz Moses apron, for example. And more recently, I've bought his KM17 router plane. And this is beautiful. It, they have thought of everything when they've built this. It's got all the bells and whistles that all the competition have, all together in one unit, and surprisingly cheaper than the competition as well. Really well made, nice little unit. The KM17 comes with a few accessories as well. You get two blades, a flat blade, and as you can see, the pointy blade there, a couple of Allen keys, a little holder for when you're sharpening the blade. That screws on there and allows you to get a better grip while you're sharpening said blade. So it's currently set up for the flat fence, as you can see. And if we wanted to use the curve following side, we just unscrew this and screw it back in from the other side again. So yeah well thought out indeed now i'm no expert on the router plane so rather than me go into too much depth i'll just say that yes this is a beautifully made tool very well thought out he goes into all the details on his channel so perhaps have a look across there but if you were to buy one i seriously doubt you would regret it it is beautiful to use and i look forward to using it a lot more in the future this is the bosch pbd 40 bench drill. Now previously I've owned your standard drill presses with the three arms that you pull down and uh, I've had them for a while and I've been considering this for a while and finally I made the decision and switched. While there's a lot of advantages to the old pedestal drill I found that the advantage of this outweighed them slightly more and the reason for that is number one it's digital with the digital speed readout Now one of the big advantages for me is instead of the table moving up and down like on your standard press drill, you in fact raise and lower the entire head. Which is really good because that means that this is a constant height. And what that's allowed me to do is mount the whole unit on a tool trolley and make it the same height as my workbench. Having the whole thing as a mobile trolley means that I can then use my workbench as a support when I want to draw longer pieces or if I've got something hanging over the edge of the workbench I can use the drill press as support. We've got a V groove here you can see I've continued that across into the table so it'll hold round stock while we drill into it. 
and I've added a couple of dovetail grooves for the match fit clamps so I can use those for holding things down. It does come with a fence and a clamp of its own. The clamp it comes with is really good for holding down smaller items in close to the unit but it's a little bit fiddly to use so wherever possible I do use these clamps. Mostly pros with this machine but there's a couple of little cons. It's a bit on the loud side compared to other drills but Let's face it, most of the time you're gonna be wearing hearing protection anyway, it should be. <laughs> so it's not really an issue in that regard. Again, plenty of other people have reviewed it, so I won't go into great detail, but certainly something worth considering. That was a bit different from most of my other videos, but hopefully there'll be something in there that'll tickle your fancy. Have a great day, have a great new year, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.